All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So I am very, very pleased to be with you all and to be able to moderate this panel of leaders who are currently uh, youth apprentices or have graduated from youth apprenticeship programs, completed youth apprenticeship programs. These are the folks from whom we are so, ex so excited to learn, to hear from, to get insights from, uh, to hear the stories of, to be able to bring back, share with our colleagues, and use in our own work. And so I'd love for them to introduce themselves. So we'll go down the row, if you will. And uh, if everybody could tell us who you are, what you're doing right now, where you are in school, um, and what your job title is. Alrighty. Well, I'm uh, Joshua Carpenter. I'm a senior at Stratford High School right now and in my first year at Trident Technical College. And I am a youth apprentice at Boeing as an NC programmer. Would, right on. <laughs> and would you, would you tell us real quick, what does an NC programmer do, Joshua? Well, I program uh, like a gantry and a robot to drill holes on plane wings. Okay, excellent. <laughs> in the right place, right? <laughs> excellent, thanks so much, Joshua. Constance. Hello, hi, I'm Constance Johnson. Um, I'm a graduate, well, I already graduated. Um, this is my first year at Trident Tech as well. Um, I work at Trident Medical Center currently, and I'm a patient care technician. Great, and what is a patient, yes. <laughs> and tell us, what does a patient care technician do? Um, we do things like making beds, washing patients. Um, we check their blood glucose levels. We draw blood. Um, we're like a little phlebotomist, kind of. Um, we do other things like just work, working under nurses, basically. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you, Constance. Thank you. Jordan. Hello, uh, I'm Jordan Fancy. I graduated Stratford High School. In uh, last year, I'm currently I'm currently an industrial maintenance technician at. Uh, sorry, um, at Cummins Turbo Technology. So, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about what you do in your work. What I do, what I do is mainly I I just keep the lines running. So. I'm, I, I'm basically I'm a mechanic, so I, fi I fix like giant machinery, keep it running. Uh, I do anything from replacing motors to replacing assembly lines. So yeah, fantastic. A anything to keep it running. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, Byron. Uh, I'm Byron Forche the second. Uh, I graduated Wando High School four years ago. Yeah, two or four, two years ago. And uh, <laughs> yes. and uh, I'm a former youth apprenticeship apprentice at this institution. Um, I work at Wild Dunes Resort on Isle of Palms, South Carolina, and I'm a line chef slash bank banquet chef during the summertime. So, right on. So thank you. So tell us, what does a line chef do? Uh, a line chef is basically anything like you typical. Let's say you go to, I don't know, your favorite restaurant. Basically, I'm preparing your food. <laughs> simple, simple as uh, yeah. I'm making sure it's getting out right, making sure it's getting out to not too salty or, or I don't like pickles and yeah. Basically, <laughs> I'm preparing food and a banquet chef is, I think, is my funnest part of my job is during the summertime, we do anything between 500 to 1,500 people for weddings or conference parties or you, me and a team of five knock that out. So, so I enjoy banquet sport. Fabulous. Thank you. All right, Stephanie. Hi, um, my name is Stephanie Walters. I was in the Trident Tech Youth Apprenticeship Program for a mechanic. Now I am at Robert Bosch being trained to be a mechanic, electrician, and a machinist. Fantastic. So you were telling me a little bit at the table about what you do in your work. Will you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, um, if the machine breaks down, uh, we fix it, um, whether it's mechanical or electrical. And then if uh, something needs to be made to modify the machine, we can make it out of metal. Right on. All right. Thank you so much. So we have some questions pre-prepared. And what I'm going to do is invite uh, our panelists to answer different questions. But what we're going to also do is, if anybody has anything to add, as we've talked about, I really want to welcome 
those additions. And then we'll make sure that there's an opportunity for folks in the audience, being blocked by the podium, um, to be able to ask questions as well. So if you would, Byron, start us off a little bit and tell us how did you first hear about the youth apprenticeship program that you ultimately went into? Who influenced your choice to pursue the program? And kind of walk us through the process of how that worked. So coming into high school, I was playing football, coming in from middle school to high school. So in my head, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to be in the NFL. Let's go ahead and make this happen. Then sadly, my sophomore year, I hurt myself, and I couldn't play anymore. So my guidance counselor, Mrs. Stilley, she introduced me into the youth fellowship program. This is the first year Wando has ever done it. And I was kind of like the prototype, per se, for that. So she's like, you, you should try this. You should do this. You like to cook. You know how to cook. Let's get you into this program. So I'm like, yeah, OK, let's do it. And then the rest is history from there. It kind of took off. My natural talent combined with the uh, book smarts, per se, it just took off for me. So Fantastic. my guidance counselor helped me out a lot with that. Well, and you were sharing with me at the table before that your family members had gone a different path and was, were encouraging you yeah. to go that route. Uh, my mother used to be a nurse, but now she does Robert St. Francis insurance. She takes care of their policies and everything. My grandmother's still a nurse, but she owns her own adult daycare, and they were kind of leading toward me going to the medical field. I was like, no, that's not good. <laughs> I can't do that. Then, you no, know, then cooking came along. I was like, okay. But my message to that is, um, Please, parents, if you hear me up, if you have children, please let them do what you think they want to do. Don't push them towards something, you're, you know, my dad did this, my father, no, no, please don't do that. Because you're not going to know if they're going to succeed until they fail. And if they do fail, give them another shot. But always, students, if you're in here, please go against the grain. I am the advocate for different. I love different. <laughs> so please go against the grain and don't give up on your dreams. Fabulous. Thank you. So does anyone else on the panel have a different journey of how you learned about the apprenticeship that you would like to share with our audience? Well, um, my grandma worked here at Trident Tech in the uh, institutional research department. And she first wanted me to, she brought the apprenticeship program to my attention in my sophomore year when I was at Stratford. And I wasn't really interested at the time, like looking at the different paths I could take. But then um, she showed me again last year and that's when they introduced the uh, engineering pathways. And so I went, my grandma basically All right. told me about it. So having those relationships with folks who understand how the process works. Mm -hmm. OK, good. Anybody else? Um, okay. <laughs> um, well, like, uh, my counselor at Fort Dorchester, Fort Dorchester um, she actually introduced it to me first. But I was just like, no, I'll just go to College of Charleston. I'm not going to do this. And then afterwards, like my mom, um, she just kept pushing it like, hey, like, here's the apprenticeship. You need to do it. It's so much better. You save money, blah, blah, blah. You get to see if nursing's really for you. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess. But <laughs> I'm going to go to a four-year college. I want to go to College of Charleston. I'm not going to do that. But after a while, I was thinking, and I was just like, OK, like, I guess I can try and see if this is cool. <laughs> but after all, I, I enjoy it. I love it so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So, Joshua, I've got you for the next question, and that is, we often describe youth apprenticeship as a triangle, and we've seen that image of the pyramid. There's the high school, the college, the employer, and the, intermer in the intermediary as well. So practically speaking, you're the one traveling the triangle, right? Each of you has been. Uh, going back and forth, navigating the transitions, the different cultures of school, work, college, What's that like? And walk us through a, a typical day or week for yourself. Well, it's, um, it's a lot different than what I was used to last year with just going to Stratford from 8.45 to 4 o'clock and coming home. But now, I mean, it starts off the same, the same still. I go to Stratford for two classes, but then I leave in the middle of the day to where I go to Boeing or here to take classes. So that's, that's a lot different from what I'm normally used to. How do you manage the homework for both high school and college and managing that with work? Well, with the remaining classes that I need to graduate from high school, I got lucky because they're not really like that intensive when it comes to that. But the classes that I have at Trident, I have to focus a lot more on those and study a lot more for those, definitely. Yeah. yeah. OK, cool. <laughs> Anybody else want to share how you navigate the different roles you, you, uh, you have? Yeah, 
For me, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. For me, I really liked having the fact that when we came to try it, some days of the week we learned something, and it wasn't something that we would learn just for some test we'd take next week, but instead it was something that was actually skillful and something that we could use the next day when we go to work. So it's not something like a formula we learned for a math class, it was something that, oh, I can take this apart at work, I can do that too. You know, it's a place where you can show yourself to your company. Right on. Thank you. Uh, piggybacking off, off what she said, basically the same thing for the kitchen. One day we'll be we'll, we'll know how to break down a chicken eight ways, and I get to work and be like, okay, bar, break down 20 chickens eight ways. I'm like, oh, we did this a couple of hours ago. So, you know, it kind of <laughs> helps out too. Very cool. So really applying what you're learning in the classroom and vice versa. Mm. Fabulous. So, whoops. So, Constance, a um, big part of youth apprenticeship is on-the-job learning. And so for this to work, you need support and mentorship on the job. So, and I think that's particularly true as a youth apprentice. So would you tell us about the relationships that you've been able to develop and who have been the key supports for you in your experience as an apprentice? Sure, um, Ms. Rowena, like she was just here like <laughs> probably like an hour or two ago. She was one of the panelists. Um, she actually hired me at Trident Health and she's been a great mentor, just checking up on us, emailing us to make sure we're on top of um, all the vaccines that we need to have for the hospitals. If there's any problems with the um, floor that we're on, just contact her or with our um, work schedule or with school. She's, she's amazing with that. And um, the nursing directors on the floor, they're really cool too. Um, they always ask if I need help with anything or if there's any questions, if you know, the nurses or the patient care techs are treating me okay. Um, they're awesome as well. And my mother, um, she's been a great mentor as well. She's actually a nurse herself. So that's pretty cool to have just in my corner just to make sure I know what I'm doing and preparing myself for nursing school. Fantastic, thank you. So do you all wanna share anyone who's been significant in your lives as a support or a mentor on the job? Yeah, uh, for me, it was, was my guidance counselor in high school, Miss Steely, and my parents at home. And like I said, it always starts at the house and the parents supporting their kids. But at Trident, there's one lady in particular. I'm not going to name no names. <laughs> Miss Kaufman. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love her so much, y'all. She's like my second mother. And any time oh, I was yeah. out of place, he was like, she was on me like flies on a, uh, on a cow pie. So, mm. so <laughs> that is one major support, and I love her so much for it. Because without her, I wouldn't be, you know, Sitting up here. Fabulous, fabulous. All right. <laughs> well, we can't overemphasize the importance of counselors and advisors and teachers and caring adults in students' lives. And we hear it in the stories right here. Anybody else want to share? Yeah, Stephanie. So I was in robotics for a lot of my time in high school, and my robotics mentor really pushed me into this program and uh, doing the um, apprenticeship program because I saw two older classmen who were doing it, and that was during the first year that they had it at my school and here at Trident. And I was like, if they could do it, I could do it too. And my mentor was like, you know, you're a female too, so you're going to be like a minority there in your field, and you can help show other females too that they can do it and that they can you know, go through and do a career that is typically uh, male-oriented. Fabulous. <laughs> so Jordan, what would you say has been the biggest benefit of your youth apprenticeship experience and what has it taught you? Um, one of the biggest benefits is free college. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about it. <laughs> yeah, um, this is like, these classes that we're taking now, I see people paying thousands of dollars and you go out there, other like four year colleges who aren't going in the same field as I am, they're paying, have like $40,000 in debt and I don't have that, thankfully. <laughs> 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 Not only that, but I also have, have experience, that something that other people who did not go to this program do not have. I have two years of experience, so not only is my foot in the door, but I also have a leg up on the co competition. So I'm getting, I'm gonna get paid more, I'm more, okay. <laughs> I can't think of the word, but I'm more desirable, basically. So. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Outstanding. Anybody else wanna talk about 
what kinds of experiences you've taken away from that, that on-the-job training, the, the benefits to your own learning in terms of helping to clarify what direction you might want to go? I'll take you back. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, like with nursing, I wasn't really sure if I really wanted to do that. You know, ooh. Um, <laughs> like, you know, like I said, my mom, she was a nurse and everything, and my grandmother, she was a nurse. Um, so I was like, I don't want to be a nurse. I don't really think that's for me. I don't want to be in that, like, you know, generation thing or whatever. It's like, maybe I'll do, like, veterinarian work or, you know, work as a PA or something, but it's like, glue it's like I was like trying to get off but it would just kind of snap back <laughs> so I was like okay so like with the apprenticeship I just feel like it kind of helped me to see if that was really for me so I really appreciated that experience fantastic what Constance says I was not I'm not a, I'm not a school guy I like to just go ahead go with the flow but that also learning doing that and I also learned how to you know kind of stay in one lane but swerve a little bit so it kind of it did help me in that area of prospect fantastic so having that on-the-job experience also fed into helping you to be successful in your school great excellent so I'm gonna start off with Stephanie with this question but I'd love to hear from everybody on the panel is there anything you wish you had known ahead of time that you now know, having experienced it, that you think is important for all of us to be aware of? So Stephanie, if you would start us off. There's a lot of things I wish I knew, and I <laughs> wish I could go back and know what I know right now. <laughs> I guess, for me, I guess one of the main things was uh, whenever I made connections at work, it was wonderful, because, you know, everyone's good at something, and someone can be, like, really passionate in a certain field, and I wish that I uh, not only, like, kept those connections, but always would go back to them whenever I had those same problems or same, like, uh, situations that came up at work, because, you know, some lines have certain things that go down, or some lines have like certain characteristics, like pneumatics, which is you know the power of air. So like you know, some lines may have like air hoses, and if someone's like really good at that, then you can go to that connection and go to that person and talk to them if it's if it's something that you might struggle with or something you might not always understand how to diagnose. Um, so I wish that I always like uh, not only kept my connections, but always like uh, kept up with them and made sure that I knew and talk to them more about uh, like their real world experience at my plant. So not just at Trident and working at any facility, but especially at Bosch. Fantastic, that's such an important reminder of how important it is to feel comfortable asking questions and also how important those relationship, relationships are on the job of folks who can help you to navigate things, right. yeah. And I also would say for people who like um, are trying to like help support the community by growing apprenticeships or help their children be encouraged into going into the apprenticeship is that, you know, it's a triangle. It's a win-win for everyone. And uh, it's not just going to help me and the people who are apprentices. It's going to help people in our country that maybe don't have those options. So like with me working at Bosch, they give me a 401k. So whenever I um, retire, I don't have to draw Social Security. So that can help someone somewhere else in the country that doesn't have the same skill and they can't get a job, so then they can rely on the government instead of me. Fantastic. Thank you. So any other insights from our panel, things that you wish you had known that you know now that you'd like for us to be aware of and maybe we can help others to anticipate that as they go into the process? Um, Oh, okay. Well, it's something I did know, like how much of a, a sacrifice you have to make, like with. You stole mine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a good one. So, <laughs> like the change in what your life is before and what it is after the apprenticeship program, like they they tell you that like it's going to be a lot different, but then like you're like I can handle it, I'll be fine. But then like once you're in it, it's like, man, like you miss a lot of the stuff from your old life, like high school, like. Again, 8.45 to 4 o'clock, seeing all my friends and just hanging out with them. But then it's like, I can't do anything because I have to go to classes and then I got to go to work and then I got to study for the tests I have. And yeah. <laughs> Picking back off what Josh said, basically the same thing. Like, 
you could come to school for half a day, then you go to either school or work for half a day, and it's like, yeah, it's the thing I wish that we know is, you know, more time. You know, like yeah. It's real time consuming. I'm thinking like, oh, four hours of class, 10 hours a week, that ain't that bad. And once you get it, I'm like, whew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna need a volume, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just time consuming. And like coming into school, then, you know, you're going back to high school, it's like, dude, I haven't seen you in like a week and a half. I'm like, yeah, I know, man. <laughs> but the time you are putting into this program does help you in the long run. Fantastic. Can I, can I pick yes, up? absolutely. Actually, um, with the nursing, the pre-nursing program for the apprenticeship, um, over the summer, we had to do a CNA and patient care tech course. And so, like, I had no summer, basically. I was, <laughs> I was there every day. <laughs> and so, um, actually, I had a mission trip I was supposed to go to with my youth group at church, and I couldn't go because literally the day we were supposed to go to the mission trip, that's the first day of our CNA class, and there was no other day I could make up the days. Usually there you go on a mission trip for a week, or you know, your future is on the line. So I definitely had to give that up and do the apprenticeship, and no regrets, no regrets. So. Fantastic, but that's a helpful reminder that sometimes we have to set different priorities and make sacrifices, but then the gains hopefully far outweigh those sacrifices, yeah. Well, I'm gonna go a little off script. So how have you managed those relationships maybe that have changed because you're not around as much? Have you been able to stay connected to folks and make new connections maybe on the job as well? Well, go oh, ahead, yeah. man. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> For me, like with the cell that I work in, they're with much older people, so we're not really like buddy-buddy after work. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> I, I still stay connected with my friends, and they like ask me like when the next like time that I could possibly hang out with them. But like, it is a lot different. So yeah. so it takes intentionality, but you don't have to sacrifice those. Yeah, yeah. No. that's good to know. Picking back off of what Josh said, yeah, I'm I'm 20 years old, so everybody else in the kitchen is in like their 60s. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, hey, we're going to get a beer. I'm like, I can't drink legally. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends from school. You know, like we still keep in touch. You always, you know, they're always checking up on me. So that's another support outlet I have in my back pocket. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh. Excellent. Oh, so thank you, guys. Um, yeah. Um, you do make a lot more friends because in um, in college, it's a lot. It's a better bond because you're going through the same thing, not just you're going through the same. You're doing the same job as um, even if it's at the different companies. You're still going to class and you get each other's numbers and you kind of like cheat off each other. <laughs> <laughs> You work together, you pass together, <laughs> but um, yeah, you you get make a deeper bond, a different, a deeper connection. So you get better friends at, during the college. So you get that a better support group after high school. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot easier. That's great. So you have both your friends in high school, but you're making all these new connections in college, help you navigate that process as well. Fantastic. All right, so. Before we open it up to the audience, um, tell us about, I'd love to just kind of go down the line. Tell us about your plans for the future. What do you want to do at this point? And if you're in the apprenticeship, what are you looking towards as a next step, um, both in terms of work and learning? So you want to start us off, Josh? Well, I'm hoping and praying that after my apprenticeship program's over that Boeing like wants me to still work with them. And then also I plan to obviously further my education and go to a university after my two years here. Okay, and what, what kind of degree would you want to pursue? Still an engineering degree in aerospace engineering. Right on, <laughs> okay, cool. Constance? Um, I want to go into the nursing program here at Trident and then Hopefully, once I get my ADN, I'll get my BSN at either MUSC or Charleston Southern and just keep progressing. I want to like, go and get like, my doctorate in, um, doctorate in nursing and become a nurse practitioner, so that'll be fun. Fantastic. Yes. And that education will be paid for as you're working in... Yes, yes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fabulous. Right. How about you, Jordan? Um, I'm just kind of the same boat as you. I'm going to pray that Cummins um, hires me on as full time. Because they make 
Um, then I'm gonna go try and get an, a master's degree in either mechanical or electrical engineering, so. Fantastic, yeah. all right, thank you. Uh, for me, I was just want to learn as much as I can right now from traveling, learning different cuisines and different skill sets that add on to my arsenal. And later on down the road, I would hope to open up my own restaurant. So, yeah. Right on, right on. Coffee forced me to tell y'all this, but um, um, my company, Wild Dunes, we do have outlets and restaurants all over the world now. We just got pit in with Hyatt, so. Now, I really have some connections, but um, coming this summer, I get to luckily go to Hawaii and learn for a couple of months, so. <laughs> Fantastic. And then I started another I apprenticeship at my so, um, um, company, last Bosch, year in May, and I graduated. Um, there, they're training me to be more than just a mechanic. They're training me to be three different things, the electrician, the mechanic, and the machinist. So with that, I'll have more job security and more flexible working schedules because I can do any of the three jobs. And then um, after that, which is going to end in 2020, then I'm going to go to the school for two years where I'm going to transfer my cl classes here at Trident. And I'm going to end up with my engineering degree as if I had you know, graduated high school and went to a four year. So I'll end up with my four year, but I won't end up in debt because my company will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephanie, would you tell us real quick what you just shared with me about having uh, just acquired something very exciting? <laughs> yes, uh, and then one of my uh, classmates and I started dating and now we are getting married soon. We are engaged. <laughs> over there. And, uh, <laughs> Something uh, more personal to me was uh, like later on after my engineering degree and my uh, educational career, um, me and him also want to start some different non-for-profits, but we also want to own our own business to pay for our non-for-profits. So we want to own a manufacturing facility and also we like working on cars, so we want to do that part-time too. And then we want to uh, help people who have uh, family uh, members who are drug addicts, because um, where I come from, my family, uh, there's some people in, that, in my family who had struggled with that. And uh, also I want to help uh, people who are um, in, the nursing, or in the foster care systems. And because uh, I was an orphan, or not an orphan, but I was in the foster care system. So I want to help people who are in the foster care and also um, own my own orphanage. Fabulous. <laughs> Woo! So, I would like to open up questions to our audience to give you all the opportunity to ask our wonderful group of panelists whatever questions you all might have. Yes, and could we have a mic down here? Or actually, I can... Here we go. There you are. Thank you so much. You, you all bet. are so inspiring. Thank you for sharing your stories. Um, Question for you. If you were speaking to your fellow students from high school and or speaking with the superintendents and or principals of the schools, what would you advise them around how to help people get into apprenticeship and especially in light of things like school sports and school clubs? How to navigate that? I, it doesn't sound like you actually would have had any time for those things or you did and then you rerouted how to help them navigate this um, time that they would have because so many people do those things, but can you do those things and work and do apprenticeship? What would you advise, again, your fellow students and the principals and superintendents in schools? Can you start? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Um, for me, like I said, I played football, so but I didn't play football and do the apprenticeship program at the same time because I was hurt. But to juggle it, I'm thinking uh, is either you tell the, the principal or whatever, whoever in charge of that, you know, let your player or let your student, you know, please work around their schedule. You know, my boss, I know during the school year, you're supposed to be working about, what, 10 hours a week? Let your boss know, listen, we got a game. We got games on Thursdays and Fridays. Do you mind if I get Thursday and Fridays off when I work? So it's Saturday, Sunday, or whatever, yada, yada then try to balance your schoolwork with your work and your football. But if you can handle all that, I said, go for it. But if you can't, you, you just got to give up something, if, especially if, if this, you know, it's dealing with your future. So, anyone else want to figure that out? 
Um, I guess I can. Um, like the same. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, the same with Byron. Um, I wasn't an athlete in high school, but I did do um, student government and leadership. And it was already kind of a hassle with doing that. And because we had to do like a certain amount of hours for volunteer work in our classes. And so it was kind of hard. But um, I like, like you said, just go for it. Just kind of work along with your work schedule. Try to work on the weekends. I know with my student government and um, leadership, we had events on the weekends. So it was kind of hard to get, you know, like your hours times and um, work around with the teachers. But I say go for it. If you have to go after school and work, go after school and work, you know, um, just make time. It, it's really hard, but definitely, definitely worth it in the long run. Fantastic. Yeah. Earlier in the year, I started my senior year. I would have started my junior year. That way I could have been done with the apprenticeship my senior year. So that way I have a lot more free time now and can go on to doing other, like more, like other degrees. So, mm, mm. otherwise. So it's really helpful to start earlier. Yeah, yes. So you have more options. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Great. Other questions from the audience? And now I think we've got some mics that are in rotation. Do I have a hand back here? I'm seeing a hand. Hey, this is not um, actually a question, but I'm kind of going to do a feeder for Stephanie. Um, speaking of options, um, Karen Winningham wanted me to remind you if you had an opportunity to share with this group your options that you had graduating First, tell them where you graduated and the ranking you had at graduation and your options at that time and why you chose Youth Apprenticeship. So um, whenever I was a junior, uh, I applied to go to Harvard for a summer school program. And what it is, is it's just like trying it where you take classes at Harvard and it counts as credits to your high school and it counts for college credits. So at the time, I thought I was going to go into science and I thought I was going to be an astronaut because I really liked uh, space. But uh, I figured out I had more of a passion to fix things. So when I went there, though, I did take classes and I had a lot of uh, fun uh, learning and meeting new people and experiencing new cultures. So whenever I graduated high school, I had a couple different options that were Ivy Leagues and I had a couple of different options that were here in South Carolina and in the area for four-year colleges. Um, but I knew that uh, if I did that, I could get it paid for because I was a foster student because like all my tuition at Harvard for that summer was paid for. But, uh, or I could do it the other way where I could go with Bosch. And I saw that if I went with Bosch, I would still have experience growing and I would still have my educational experience because I want to learn. And I knew that um, at the end of the day, if I wanted to go back to Harvard and get a, like, a degree, maybe my master's or a PhD or something, you know, I could always apply and do something later on. But for now, I knew that uh, my goals and my life and Bosch's goals and their, uh, I guess their values, you know, they aligned with mine. So I knew that if I kept going with uh, not just Bosch, but with uh, manufacturing, that I'm going to be set for life. That's fabulous. Thank you. That's such an important reminder that there are equally valid, equally valued post-secondary pathways that can lead to wonderful opportunities for folks and to not create hierarchies that always apply to every individual. So that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Did I see a hand? Yeah, right over here. I just want to say that I'm coming from the beautiful Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. If you guys have business cards with your contact on them and you want to move to Virginia, I can connect you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Gentleman in the back. Oh, sorry. So you guys have a lot of people in the room who are thinking about designing apprenticeships. If you were the designers, what would be the single most important thing that you would want to be a part of an, any apprenticeship experience? That's going towards the, uh, like, 
designing your own path or? Yeah. So if you, would you like to clarify? Just if you got to design your own apprenticeship program for across any industry, not just in culinary, but anyone, what would be the, the first thing that you'd be like, okay, every apprentice needs this thing? Uh, I want to say every apprenticeship, if you're going to go for it, go 100 or don't go at all. Mm -hmm. You've got you to put, if you, have, if you have the passion for it and you have the love for it, you can't, once you get in, there's a getting out, but you're not going to like it. So, <laughs> but just go for it. Don't be afraid not to pursue what you want to do. So. Right on. Piggybacking off of you, also, um, if you're going to like design one where you can implement it in other states, uh, one main problem that we have here is that we're covering not only Dorchester County, Charleston County, or Berkeley County, where like, we have three different counties that are all coming here in North Charleston. So I live from Dorchester in Dorchester County, so that's about 45 to an hour ride. So one problem is transportation. So one thing that you might need to you know, include in your design is how are you going to get these people, depending on how many counties you're covering, and then another thing is, is um, make sure the tuition is paid for, because we, we can't pay for it. Like we said, that's one of the main things, is that it's free. And uh, we have um, the Charleston Joint Council who pays for our books. So not only classes are covered, but we need textbooks to take those classes. And we need uh, supplies. Like um, for us, it was textbooks for, I guess, for nursing. They'd probably need like medical equipment. And and different stuff like that, yeah. like scrubs. They pay for our scrubs too, which was really cool. For us, it was uh, knife bags, knives. You know, we got we got that, but you know, knife bags, knives, utensils, all that good stuff. But that would be like hundreds of dollars. Yes, right? it would have been yes. Yes. So, yeah. three, four hundred dollars yeah. at least, right? Those mm -hmm. textbooks, one fifty. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Ooh, right. Ooh. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> there was another gentleman sitting right here. His hands up right here. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Thompson from Chicago City Colleges. Uh, first, I want to say just um, how impressive all of you are. Fantastic. Uh, your poise and sharing your stories with us is really excellent. Um, and so what I want to ask is if you could maybe each share uh, what is maybe one of the most difficult things you had to overcome to be successful, and then any accomplishment that you're especially proud of that you would share. Lovely. First? Well, as I was talking about, oh, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, as I was saying before, with uh, having to like give up my normal high school life for this and not being able to talk to my friends and seeing my friends as much, that's definitely like the number one thing out of anything. But for the part about accomplishments, with what I do at Boeing with NC programming, like there's a lot of stuff you can mess up on, and then you have to go back and figure it out, and Anytime I like figure something out on my own, because this is my first time ever doing anything like this, I don't know, it just feels really like I did something. <laughs> so, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Constance. Um, for me, it was kind of like I wanted to go to a four year college rather than a two year. So it was, I, it was, ugh, oh my gosh. But because um, all my friends, they were going to four year colleges. So for me, like everyone was like, you're going to Trident? You're going to a two year tech school? Constance, you're so much better than that. You're so smart. Why are you doing this to yourself? And it's like, oh, what's the difference? Like we're getting the same education for the first two years and I could transfer, you know? But I was a little ashamed of that. And that's why like I kind of didn't want to go like for the apprenticeship. And I'm just so thankful that my mom kind of pushed me towards that just to like overcome that and not really, you know, let that affect what, what can go on inside of me, what that passion is in me. So um, for that, that's something I had to overcome and just figuring out what I wanted to do rather what everyone else is gonna say, just doing me. So um, with that, what I'm accomplished, um, kind of just working in the hospital with like older people and um, kind of getting like that hands-on experience because usually like there's like hospital policies and stuff we can't normally do as young people. So it's kind of cool to just, you know, get in there and be like a little junior and everything like that. So I love it. It's great. <laughs> That's fabulous. Thank you. Jordan. Um, 
my, I'm a quiet person, <laughs> as you can probably see. Um, but my biggest hurdle was trying to just stepping out of my comfort zone and into into an adult situation because in high school you can just get, stay in the background and just not talk at all. Mm -hmm. Here you have to speak up, speak loud because in the because you can probably attest to this. In a factory, it's very loud, so you cannot be soft spoken at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that was adapting to that was very hard for me. Right on. And here you are talking to all these yes. people, and what a wonderful leader. Thank you. That's fabulous. Byron. Uh, for me, kind of picking, backing off what Constance said, I, I had to get over my pride because when I was first int introduced to this program, it was like, okay, we're going to send you to Trident. I'm like, man, y'all couldn't send me to CIA in New York or <laughs> in Wales or something like that. Then, then I thought about it for a minute. I'm like, well, it is closer to the house. <laughs> so, so getting over my pride and you know, getting to this program, struggling to get to this program was my hardest. And my uh, my accomplishments from it is being the being one of the youngest chefs on we have ever hired to date. So. Off the, off the gate, not being a dishwasher. And if you're a chef, you know what I'm talking about. You start off in the dishes and you grow your way up to the line. Not for me. It's just one of the youngest chefs they ever hired in there. Fabulous. Stephanie. So um, for me, I guess uh, there's two main things I had to get over. One was, um, you know, being a female, how do I explain my opinion and my views to, uh, like, my older, you know, mentors? Because we always, like, follow a mentor and whoever you know, is teaching you how to run your machines, and usually they're like, this is how it's done, this is the way we do it. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, well, what if we do it this way? You know, I always like to, like, see things in a different light, so um, that was one thing. And another thing for me was, um, like, getting it over to my counselors or getting it over to my, like, the educational leaders was that, you know, I'm going to go to Trident instead of going to a four-year college. This is whenever I was in the process of graduating, because they have these meetings where you talk to the guidance guidance counselors and you tell them what you want to do and why and where you want to go and they just kept looking at me like why Stephanie like why don't you want to go to these great places and I'm like I tried to explain it to them so that's one of the things I had to get over was that they might not like my decision but I like my decision and um, <laughs> I guess my uh, greatest achievement would be my family because uh, we do struggle with um, trying to, uh, you know, incorporate friends or family or incorporate, like, the events we want to go to in our social lives. But uh, for me, it was like, you know, sometimes my friends are busy, that's okay, but my family is always there. So I can always go to them, and I try to spend, you know, some time with them every month. You know, my grandparents raised me, so I always try to give back to them. And um, so family is probably my greatest accomplishment. That's fabulous. Time. Well, I think we are at time, but I want to thank our extraordinary panel. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you on behalf of all of us for sharing your stories, for sharing your insights, for sharing your experiences, and for being such extraordinary leaders from whom we have all learned so much today. So one more round of applause. Thank you.